I'm zeroing in right here. It must be right here somewhere, right? That's pretty that's very clever. That's very clever. <laughs> Would it be down there? Hey, my name is Alex Smith and I'm from the Exploratorium and we're gonna run around the city today and learn all about geocaching. Hi, I'm Rob Rothfarb, I'm a geocacher. I'm Steve Browning and uh, I've been doing geocaching for probably about nine or ten years now. Geocaching actually is basically a game, hide and seek game, that um, is dependent and based upon GPS coordinates. Um, and so as we all know, GPS coordinates, you know, play a very anymore they play a very critical role in finding our way, our finding directions and that sort of thing. But of course being human beings as we are, we want to play and we want to do something different with it. And so um, one of the things that we can do differently with it is place geocaches. And can anyone play? Uh, as long as you've got access to GPS. And who, uh, where do the caches come from? Who puts them there? Who places caches? Any, anybody can place a cache, but um, there are certain rules and, and regulations as far as what, what can be placed and where it can be placed and people monitor that you know and either approve or disapprove it. Generally what does a cache look like when you're finding a cache what kinds of things what might you be keeping your eye out for? It's usually going to be a small box um, pretty much a weather type box like a Tupperware container or an ammunition box um, something that's sealed well to the weather so that it can have paper items in it and things that wouldn't be affected by water. Are there different kinds of geocaches? Um, yeah, actually there's a whole variety of different types of, of caches and uh, the one we're actually standing at now is called an earth cache. An earth cache gives you more information about the geology of the area, basically. The one we're at right here actually is, um, is serpentine, which is the state rock of California. And there's a big vein of serpentine that runs actually all the way across the peninsula. And an earth cache also gets you to area you may not have seen before or may not have been to, like here, which is beautiful. We're looking for a cache uh, that we visited a couple months ago. And it's interesting because um, you're not sure when you go to find a cache whether it's actually going to be there. So, um, maybe here from here. Aha. Huh. Okay, so this is interesting because yeah. this cache has morphed from uh, what was originally a, a larger box, a traditional cache, into now a smaller nano cache. And what kinds of things can you also find in a cache besides a, a small nano cache? Um, different objects can be inside of a cache, um, usually little trinkets, different things. Um, there are also the travel bug or geocoin type of um, prize inside of a cache and those are things that people place in a cache that are designed to travel from cache to cache. Holy cow! So, it's a bit of a spoiler, but we're not showing you exactly where we are. Here's an official geocache. So, this one is hidden in plain sight, but really camouflaged. Let's see what's inside. There's also the online aspect of interacting socially with people because since it is a game, people log their finds. You can keep a record of um, all the finds that, that you found, all the different caches that you found. If you're tracking any of the travel bugs or geo coins, um, uh, there's, there could be points associated with that or sort of notoriety with having been the first to find something um, uh, for an object that's moving from cache to cache. Well, and there's series of caches, too. You know, people get very creative with this sort of stuff, and they will send you from one cache to another cache to another cache, and at each one, you learn information that guides you to the next one. A lot of times, the information are numbers that you have to plug in uh, to, um, to find what the actual next GPS coordinates for the next cache are. So you have to find the one before you can get to the next, and you have to find that one before you can get to the third one. And those can be fun, too, if you've got the time. It's great. It's a little bit of Indiana Jones in your own backyard. <laughs> <laughs>